Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim Welcome to the very first Q&A of uh, my channel inshallah uh, So I posted a picture on Instagram and I asked you all to drop whatever questions you might have and the most common question that showed up was can you give us some tips and advice on how to memorize the Quran So I promised you all that if I don't know the question to an answer or if I know someone who can answer a question better than I can, I will consult with someone and I will bring a guest onto my Q&A inshallah. So today we have a good friend of mine and a brother, Sheikh Suleiman Hani. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi So Sheikh Suleiman Hani, he is a very good friend of mine and brother. I met him a couple years or a few years back now. Um, he is the author of several books, mashallah. He's a Hafiz al Quran. He is an Imam from Michigan. And now he just travels to give speeches and lectures at different conventions and events. Um, so, Sheikh Suleiman, um, everyone has their own story of memorizing the Quran, their journey to it. Could you share with us a story of something unique or something significant from your journey of memorizing the Quran? Absolutely. Uh, the first thing that I'll mention is that. When I initially was told by my uncle that I would be memorizing a specific amount of the Quran within those 10 months, I, I thought it was hilarious. Like, I didn't believe him. I said, there's no way I can do that. He said, I'm positive you can. We'll start together and we'll work towards it consistently. And I realized over those months that a lot of it was uh, required self-motivation. If somebody doesn't really want to memorize the Quran, it will be difficult uh, to retain it even if they do memorize it. So if somebody's being forced, for example... And they don't really want to. Later on, they might start to lose some of that. So it is something that is uh, that should be a conscious decision. It is something that's usually fueled by that motivation. Uh, and many times we see people's beautiful experiences around us. One time a 16-year-old came to me crying after Salah. And I said salam to him. And he took out one of those sidekick phones, started typing really quickly. Mm. He wrote, Assalamu alaikum, my name is such and such. When I was 16 years old, I finished memorizing the Quran. And a week later, he lost the ability to hear so he said, I'm grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm crying out of gratitude, not anger. Gratitude that I was able to finish memorizing the Qur'an before I lost the ability to hear. Now you and I have, alhamdulillah, the blessings of hearing and seeing and reciting. So oftentimes people don't realize how precious these blessings are until they're taken away. And so the lesson I took from that was use the blessings of Allah while you still can. And many times people procrastinate, they think tomorrow. Take advantage of today, you don't know what tomorrow will bring. Let alone if if we're even alive tomorrow or next week, Allah alam. So this is one of the interesting stories that I uh, that I experienced. Alhamdulillah, many people have beautiful stories in their journeys to connecting to the book of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Subhanallah. So I I get asked usually um, if I can give like a quick tips on how to memorize the Quran. And if I was to ask you, if I was to come up to you and I asked you, can you give me top three to five tips? that will help me better memorize the Qur'an or more sufficiently and thoroughly memorize the Qur'an, what would you say to me? So here's the thing about this question. Oftentimes, if somebody's asking, uh, as you mentioned, some people ask about the top tips to memorize in the Qur'an, uh, there is no one tip that will really uh, apply to everyone, right? So this is why the book has 114 tips. Some of these are specific to memorization techniques. Some of these are simply motivational about the rewards of Jannah elevating one rank in paradise for every ayah you memorize. This is one of the most powerful in terms of spirituality. So everyone will really have a different tip that moves them forward. And people have different strengths and weaknesses. If I had to mention just three for the sake of this video, the first that I will say is the internal motivation. Why do you want to memorize the Qur'an? And so if someone does not really understand the full reasons, the many reasons they have to memorize in the Qur'an, it becomes difficult to push through the moments of difficulty. Uh, it becomes difficult to push through those moments of fatigue and exhaustion and giving up. Uh, and it becomes overwhelming. So the sincerity is a very strong factor. One of the scholars, Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he said that the proportion that you will be given in terms of the results is equal to the proportion of your sincerity. So however strong your sincere intention is, you will see the results based on that. And so if you really want to memorize the Qur'an for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and no other reason, no worldly reason, no praise from people, no money, nothing like this. 
you're doing it purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will find that the results are equal or in proportion to your intention. This is the first tip. The second tip is that of consistency. And a lot of people don't realize the importance of this. Wallahi, even if someone memorized one line an entire week, one line of the Mus'haf, you would think it's insufficient, it's too little. But after a while, the amount will increase naturally. Nobody memorizes the Qur'an from beginning to end at the same pace. Their memory increases, their abilities improve. So what's most important in the beginning is to have a consistent habit. And the same way you have consistency in other things in life, you should have a consistency in memorizing the Qur'an. And of course the emphasis is on reviewing and implementing what you are memorizing. So that's number two. Number three, I would say, perhaps one of the most important things to keep in mind. A lot of people don't realize that the journey of memorizing the Qur'an, the entire journey from beginning to end, is not something that is limited in scope. It has countless effects and implications, countless blessings for this life and for the next life. And so when we are embarking on this journey to memorizing the Qur'an, we should realize that this is not a small project. So it's not a side thing because it's going to have a small priority. Rather, the same way you have these major projects in your life, major goals in your life, major phases in your life of doing things, the Qur'an should be a major goal internally in your mind so that when you act upon it and you're reciting, memorizing, reviewing, you're living the Qur'an constantly. When you listen to audio, you're listening to the Qur'an often. When you're reciting and you have free time, you're in the car driving, you're waiting somewhere, you wake up before you sleep, you want to immerse yourself in the Qur'an. It's a lifelong project. It's not something that's a side project, and it's not a finish line. Because if you think it's a finish line, you'll cross, and then you'll probably forget most of the Qur'an. And you don't want to be someone who was uh, caused to be forgotten, forgotten. Rather, you want to be someone who's always living, and repeating, and reciting, and implementing, uh, and teaching other people the Qur'an as well. So I would say these are the top three tips. The thing is, the book really does cover tips that apply to everyone, so that by the time you, you start and finish the book, you'll realize there are no excuses left. If you have the blessing of memory, everything else is manageable, meaning you can overcome the other obstacles or struggles, inshallah. Wallahu alam. Jazakallah khair. Okay, so the book that he's talking about is um, this book right here. I have got it recently and I finished reading it, alhamdulillah. It's called 114 Tips to Help You Finally Memorize the Qur'an. And... If I had given you any answer, it would have been, you know, the top three tips, top five tips that will, you know, help you. But this book goes into so much depth, mashallah. It is very well researched. It will address any concern you might have, any obstacle you might face. And it, talk, it doesn't just address things that you, might come your way um, before you start your journey on memorization, memorization, but it also addresses things that might, you, you might come across while um, immersed in your journey to memorizing the Qur'an. So... Jazakallah I really appreciate it. The book, Alhamdulillah, because uh, most of the focus is on distributing it to as many uh, Qur'an memorization students around the world, Qur'an memorization institutes. So now, Alhamdulillah, it's available on six continents. Uh, all that's left is for me to get it to Antarctica. Maybe give some da'wah to the penguins, inshallah. But Alhamdulillah, I want people to realize when they are supporting this book, they are supporting, most of the proceeds are supporting... Uh, underdeveloped countries or institutes or organizations that cannot afford the book. So they are not just helping themselves, but alhamdulillah, they're helping others. Furthermore, uh, alhamdulillah, the book has been one of the top-ranked Islamic books on Amazon uh, for a while now. It, this recent edition was published in February. I don't think there will be, be any updates in coming years because this is the culmination of five to seven years of work. Uh, 50 scholars in their input, uh, students of knowledge, Qur'an institutes, so Alhamdulillah, the book has had a lot of review, a lot of uh, focus, a lot of work. And so this will probably be the final version for a long time, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, again, it's been distributed all over the world, uh, over 15,000 copies within this last month, alhamdulillah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put barakah in it and for people to realize it's a gift not just for others and not for children. This is for adults. This is for those who might have lost hope in memorizing the Qur'an. Alhamdulillah, a lot of them have regained hope after reading this and starting their journey. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from all of us. Um, um, I, see, I see on the back of this book, uh, Nurman Ali Khan says, a must-have for every Muslim household. Dr. Yasser Qadi says, this well-researched book will surely become a standard reference in its field for years to come, inshallah, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh. Jazakallah khair. Barakallah Thanks for having me, bro. Take care, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.